Pikmin enemies are some of the most cute, interesting, and terrifying creatures from any video game series. With the recent release of Pikmin 4, Nintendo has brought back many familiar foes and added a few new species as well. With a Piklopedia of 125 creatures, Pikmin 4 holds the record for the highest number of entries of all the Pikmin games by a pretty large margin. I'd be lying if I didn't say I was a little disappointed by the lack of completely new enemy designs. So, that brings me to the topic of today's video, designing new, original Pikmin enemies. Not only will I be presenting sketches of my ideas, I'll also be drawing complete conceptual art pieces for them. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so for the first enemy of today's video, we have the Pellet Poser. Deriving from the Pellet Posey, one of the Pikmin series' most iconic plants, the Pellet Poser is a sly but deadly creature, often hiding in plain sight. The idea for this enemy stemmed from my love of the creeping chrysanthemum from Pikmin 2 and 4. This enemy's element of surprise is super enticing to me, keeping the game's playstyle fresh and making the players stay on their toes. So, in phase 1, as you'll see, there's nothing too out of the ordinary. For the concept sketch, I drew a basic pellet posy because, unlike the creeping chrysanthemum, I didn't want to have any dead giveaways to the player that something may be off about this plant. Rather, the player might grow suspicious if a single Pikmin is tossed onto the pellet and doesn't knock it down instantly, but instead starts whacking away at a meaty health bar. Best call the Pikmin back because it's time for phase 2. Phase 2 is when the interesting things start to happen. As the Pikmin attack the pellet, the flower petals will begin to move slightly backwards in anticipation. With a sudden growl, the pellet poser will quickly swoop its petals forward, enveloping whatever Pikmin were attacking the pellet with a crushing force. Think Pearly Clam Clamp. Sadly, any Pikmin left on the plant are as good as dead at this point, but this enemy still has another trick up its sleeve. It's time for Phase 3. You want some chips? After closing its petals around the pellet and or Pikmin, the pellet poser will stiffen its neck upright and push the pellet downward into the base of its stem. There, the Pikmin will be forced into its stomach, the pellet acting as the retracting muscles of an esophagus. Once devouring its first meal, the pellet will remain inside the stomach of the creature. As the flower petals begin to unravel, an empty, gaping hole reveals itself, surrounded by a set of sharp teeth. This orifice will function as the creature's large and disturbing mouth. Simultaneously, the pellet poser will uproot itself from the ground, unveiling its quadrupedal stance. Where a normal-looking leaf once hung, the blooming of an eyeball cloaked in petals now emerges. The pellet poser has reached its final form, but we're not done just yet. <laughs> Being in its final form, the pellet poser is able to scutter freely about the open plains. Its speed is quick, rivaling that of the iridescent flint beetle. As it runs, its large flower-shaped mouth lulls close to the floor, while its flower-shaped eyeball stands tall, surveying its surroundings. When the pellet poser approaches what it considers to be food, it will, in a momentous force, vacuum up everything around it. In terms of gameplay, the way to successfully damage this creature is to attack its weak spot, the eye. Throwing Pikmin directly at the target is the best strategy. However, if your Pikmin are charged or Ochi rushed onto the enemy, they'll begin to scale the stem in a similar style to that of the burgeoning spiderwort. Yet, this is disadvantageous since after 4 seconds of climbing and attacking, the pellet poser will simply shake the Pikmin off. Fallen troops will then be easy prey for the creature's vacuum move, so it's best to call them back quickly. If the pellet poser gets far enough away, or the player abandons the fight, the enemy will revert back to its previously assumed guise as a regular pellet posy. 
It may stick out like a sore thumb though, being placed in a random location not likely to be manually selected by the game devs. For example, in the middle of the Pikmin's carrying path. So here's the finished concept art. I tried my best to illustrate my visions, I hope it came across well. I think adding the Pikmin to the scene really helped bring the creature to life for me, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below, but do not go anywhere because we still have a few more enemies to explore. Okay, continuing on, we have our second enemy of the day, the Bumbling Bulborb. I couldn't do a Pikmin enemy video without designing my own Bulborb. I mean, come on, this little guy has been the most iconic enemy of the entire franchise. I really wanted to create an enemy that was seemingly simple to defeat, but actually incredibly dangerous. Except if you're... a rock. All about balance, baby. For the Bumbling Bulborb's neutral stance, I chose to keep the familiar sleeping state of most Bulborbs in the series. This enemy would only be found in dark areas, such as caves or nighttime expeditions. It uses its bioluminescent body to find prey in the dark. Instead of the typical large colored spots regularly found on its Bulborb brethren, this big guy is speckled with a plethora of smaller, dark colored dots. This design choice made sense to me since the smaller spots would cover a lot more surface area, allowing the Bulborb a much better defense, as we can see in Phase 2. The Bumbling Bulborb's second phase is its hostile stance. When awoken by a loud noise or a sudden attack, the startled creature protrudes an array of deadly spikes from each spot on its back. As an act of self-defense, these spikes create an impenetrable barrier to the enemy's hindsight. If the player tried to take down this enemy with the same strategy used with regular Bulborbs, you know, attack its back while it's sleeping, any unfortunate Pikmin thrown onto it would be suddenly impaled by the creature's sharp thorns. Except the Rock Pikmin, of course. Inspirations for this enemy came from the Prickle Puff and Porquillion from Pikmin 4. However, my goal was to make their attack design much deadlier. Don't get me wrong, I left myself a big bowl of ouchy. <laughs> but I do think his attacks can be a little OP, especially the rush move. So many enemies in this game can be almost insta-killed with a large Pikmin squad and an Ochi rush. In the case of the Bumbling Bulborb, if the player were to Ochi rush their squad of 100 Pikmin onto its back, all Pikmin except the Rockmen would be annihilated. Brutal, I know, but I'm a Pikmin vet, I crave the challenge. Well, you may be thinking, well why don't I just charge from the front or the side? Well, I thought of that too, so I designed the Bulborb to have spikes on its cheeks and nose area to defend against such an attack. The only way to effectively defeat this enemy would be the good old fashioned tossing of the Pikmin, you know, onto the eyes of the Bulborb. Uh, anywho, here's the finished concept art. I wanted to display the bumbling Bulborb during the night with its glowing body lighting up the surroundings. The story in my head was that this little rockman fell out of a tree and landed on the Bulborb's back, waking it up. Now he's hiding, but not doing a very good job at it. Let me know your thoughts on this creature and if you'd like to see him in the next Pikmin game. Anyways, it's time for the next enemy. Hey, you're in fire. <laughs> Moving on to our third enemy of the video, the Burrowing Fluke Whip. When playing Pikmin 4, I sort of felt like the wing Pikmin were severely underused. I was craving an enemy that required winged Pikmin, but didn't ever really get one. I mean, sure, there are some flying creatures that, in theory, are easier to take down with the winged Pikmin, but there was no true enemy that was really winged Pikmin specific. So, let's change that. Fans of Pikmin 3 will recognize what I've sketched instantly. The Flukeweed served as a pellet posy of sorts, only accessible to winged Pikmin. In the previous game, a certain number of winged Pikmin were required to uproot the Flukeweed, which usually revealed a pellet or an egg filled with nectar or something similar. That's the direct inspiration for the idle stance of this enemy. You see it? 
Unlike the pellet poser we previously discussed, this enemy reveals itself the moment you or your Pikmin get within a short radius of it. During its offensive stance, the burrowing fluke whip unravels its tail and pierces anything moving near it. Once again, all Pikmin types, except Rock, will be susceptible to the fluke whip's ground attack. Also, any attempt by a Pikmin to attack this enemy in this stance is utterly futile. The resemblance of a flukeweed from Pikmin 3 provides players with a hint on how to actually defeat this enemy. If you throw or charge winged Pikmin at the fluke whip's tail, they will evade its piercing attack and attempt to lift the enemy into the air. A total of 5 winged Pikmin will do the job, unearthing the fluke whip's full body. Its design is quadrupedal, having a large open mouth with a hanging tongue, and seemingly no eyes. Also, interestingly, a sizable crystal sits upon the creature's topside. Wonder how we'll deal with that. Once uprooted, the burrowing fluke whip will sit vulnerable and squirming in the winged Pikmin's grasp for a short amount of time. The only way to effectively damage the creature in this state is to use the rock pikmin to break the creature's protective crystal. Once shattered, a single yellow eye is unveiled. The player then has a short amount of time to attack the eyeball, the flukewhip's only weak spot, before the enemy shakes off the wing pikmin, scurries across the floor, eats any idle pikmin laying around, and burrows under the ground again, all to repeat the attack cycle. This enemy is really a big love letter to Pikmin 3. Not only does this creature require winged Pikmin, but also the Rock Boys as well. Which are, if you're unfamiliar, the two new Pikmin types introduced in the third game. I feel like they were handled a lot better in that game. The Rock Pikmin were required to smash large crystal rods scattered across the landscape, and the winged Pikmin were super useful in the Scornet Maestro fight, and the final area of the game. No spoilers, don't worry. I tried my hardest to come up with a unique idea that involves the two, so I hope you guys are happy with the way the enemy came out. Also, here's the completed concept art. I wanted to depict the Pikmin in a battle with the burrowing fluke whip in a time where there is no captain present. The winged Pikmin learned from the player to carry the rocks and pelt the beast. They really are the star of the show. Alright, so now we arrived at the final enemy of today's video. It's not just a regular old enemy. Oh no, for the finale, I wanted to do something special. That's right, I designed a boss! But wait, before we continue, if you enjoyed the video, it would mean the absolute world to me if you could leave a comment, like, or subscribe. I'm in a very weird, transitional state in my life at the moment, and I would love to actually be able to pursue a career in what I love to do, which is making art and videos like this one. Your support would make that possible. So if you could, I would appreciate it more than you could ever know. Thank you all so much. With that being said, this boss's name is... The Man of the Hour. Directly referencing one of my all-time favorite Pikmin bosses, Man at Legs, the Man of the Hour is like his close relative. I really wanted to design something challenging, that would require the player to think quickly and strategically. I hope you all will enjoy. Rachel, kill it! Rachel, kill it! Ah! The idle phase of the Man of the Hour resembles a pocket watch. I chose to put the new Pikmin logo on the casing because I think it complements the design beautifully. Being half submerged into the ground, similar to the Man at Legs, and honestly, a lot of bosses, this enemy will only activate once you toss the Pikmin onto it. Also, if Nintendo ever decides to make a pocket watch like this, for one, where's my check? And for two, take my money because I want it. <laughs> Murphy. Murphy. Oh my god. Phase 2 reveals the Man of the Hour's hostile stance. As you can see, he's part of the Arachnorb family. Four giant legs emerge from beneath the floor and lift its body into the air. While doing so, 
The front casing of the watch flips down, revealing the clock face beneath. In the center lies a large, menacing eye. In this state, the boss will scatter around the floor until you attack it by tossing a Pikmin onto its eye. Phase 3 and 4 are part of the same move, so I decided to group them together. Harkening back to the clamping attack of the pellet poser, and by extension, the pearly clam clamp, after a short amount of time letting the Pikmin attack its eye, the man of the hour won't shake the Pikmin off, but instead will quickly slam its lid shut, crushing any Pikmin currently damaging its weak spot. Moving on to the next phase, any Pikmin that lay idle on the battlefield are susceptible to the Man of the Hour's squishing move. In a split second, whilst the lid is still closed, the boss will run above any Pikmin it can find and fall directly on top of them. Also, this move isn't limited to idle Pikmin. The boss will follow the player's active squad, and or Ochi, and try and crush them too. If the player stops moving, that could lead to fatal consequences. I also grouped Phase 5 with the concept art because they depict the same thing. Now, time for the reason I created this idea. I named this boss the Man of the Hour because I wanted to present a unique twist to the gameplay formula. As most people recognize, in Pikmin, an enemy's health bar is displayed as a circle, which when damaged depletes in a clockwise motion, just like a watch. The Man of the Hour's clock face will be congruent with its health bar. If its health is damaged, the clock's minute and hour hands will move forward through time to match up with the display of the health circle. This next move will directly correlate to the health of the boss, and by extension, the time displayed on the clock. With a sudden jolt, the Man of the Hour will open the tube at the tip of its body and spray out a ball of toxic fog, the same kind uttered by the Smoky Prog. This fog is so deadly that it insta-kills any Pikmin that it touches. To add to the difficulty, once the fog hits the ground, the ball will travel across the floor in an expanding ring until it reaches a set distance and dissipates. The best way to avoid this attack would be to jump on Ochi and hop over the rings on the floor. The amount of fog balls shot out by the boss will be determined by the location of the hour hand, or the clock's time. To further explain, if you damage the boss exactly halfway, the time displayed on the enemy's clock face would be 6 o'clock, and it would shoot out exactly 6 balls of fog. All these attacks will continue until the enemy is defeated, with the most amount of fog balls being able to be shot in one cycle being 11, in which the frequency of attacks would be a lot higher. Well, here's the final concept art. I chose to depict Ochi and the Leafling observing the creature in the distance. I know this last boss was a lot to take in, but I wanted to make this fight a grueling one because that makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy too. Alright, so just to recap, in this video we explored the Pellet Poser, The Bumbling Bulborb The Burrowing Fluke Whip And the Man of the Hour Please let me know your favorite in the comments below Or, if you have any other enemy ideas, let me know what you'd like to see in the future I definitely want to make more videos like this going forward, so please don't forget to subscribe to see more content from me, Paracosm Party. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.